Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm Olivier Le Villain and uh, I'm with Aina uh, Toki Razo Manana. We work at Telecom Sud Paris. Uh, I'm an assistant professor there and Aina worked on this during his internship and he's now a PhD student with me at Telecom Sud Paris. So we are going to speak about RSA and an, uh, an attack that you might already know of that is Blash and Barra and we try to, to write some code about this attack. So I will let Aina speak a little with, uh, about RSA and Blaise and Barra. Okay. Uh, I thought our talk, we are going to, to see a little reminder about Aiza and PKS1 uh, version 1.5. Uh, and after, we are going to see the Blaise and Butcher algorithm and the tool that uh, we we have developed during my internship and after uh, the, our current results and future work. Uh, Blazing Butcher attack is an attack against the PKS1 uh, version 1.5 SEM. As you all know, ELSA is an asymmetric encryption and signature. Uh, it is a cryptographic widely used today. It's ubiquitous. And uh, whether for, for encryption or signature. In this talk, we note N and D the ELSA public key and D the uh, private key. Uh, for encryption, uh, we need to use the public key NND to compute the cipher text corresponding to the message M. For this, we need to compute M power E modulo N. And for uh, decryption, we need to, comp to, to use this formula. Uh, but ELSA has some uh, program, for example, if E and M are small, but another problem for ESA is also the malleability with respect to the multiplication. Uh, we will see later that uh, we can exploit this weakness of ESA to realize the uh, blade and butter attack. PKSS1 is a standard that describes how to use uh, ASA. It's the, it describes the use, uh, it describes the use of uh, padding before encryption. And uh, the padding sum varies depending uh, on the version of uh, PKCS, PKCS1. Uh, in this talk, we are most interested in padding type 2, described in version 1.5 of the standard and uh, used for encryption. Uh, for example, if, uh, if we want to, to encrypt encapsulated data, first, we need to add 2 bytes, 0, 0, 0, 2, followed by at least eight non-zero random bytes. And all these messages must have the same length of the modulus, modulus n in bytes. Uh, PKS1 version 1.5 had uh, free, have free, uh, free padding type, the padding type two that uh, we, we had seen already. And the padding type zero, padding, and padding type one. The padding type zero is already used. The padding type one is used for uh, signature. Uh, for padding type one, instead of adding at least, at least eight uh, random bytes, uh, we need to, to add at least eight 
8 times the uh, FFF FF, uh, bytes. Currently, there is also uh, PKCS1 version 2.1 that accepts uh, web optimal asymmetric encryption padding for encryption and uh, PSS probabilistic signature SEM for signature. Uh, well, well, PKCS1 version 2.1 is better, has have better security properties. It's not always used in the in standard. Uh, bread and butter attack is an old attack that in from 1988. To better understand the bread and butter attack, note that if we have uh, a message correctly formatted, uh, descri described in this figure, we know that the message was starting by uh, the byte zero, zero, 002. And because the message star is starting by uh, this byte, so if we interpret, we interpret this message as an integer, this means that the message M is uh, between uh, 2B and 3B, where B equals to 2 power the, uh, size of N in bits minus uh, 16. To realize the present battery attack, mean to have access to an oracle. An oracle which accept to decrypt a messages and return true when the padding was correct and false otherwise. When the when the oracle receive an, encry an encrypted data, an encrypted message, first he decrypted the message and he check if the the the, mes the, the decrypted message is correctly formatted or not. If so, he returned true and false otherwise. To recover uh, the plain text corresponding to the to SFR text C, an attacker choose an integer S and, com and compute C uh, multiplied by S power E. And after he sent it to the, the server. When the server received the, the message, he decrypted the message, uh, it's corresponding to, uh, the, the decrypted message co is corresponding to uh, M multipli multiplied by S. And he check if M MS is, cor is correctly formatted. If so, he returned true. When the, when the attacker received the message, if the message that he has received is true, so he can deduce some information about the decrypted message, uh, M multiplied by S, because the message was starting by, he know that the message, the decrypted message was starting by uh, the byte 0002. And he deduce uh, this inequality. If an attacker, if an attacker makes enough requests to the server, he can recover the the message M using uh, this uh, inequality. Uh, in practice, the attacker wants to find messages starting with uh, the byte 0, 0, 0, 002. However, some oracles uh, makes additional checks. Some oracles didn't check only if the message was starting by 0, 0, 002, but they check, maybe they, they check also if there, there is really 
uh, at least eight random pages. Uh, to, to, to realize the present battery attack, Uh, in, in this example, we, we, we look at uh, an example of what a server could do. It's, uh, it would respond only true when all these conditions are, um, are verified. So he will check that the padding is actually correct, but all the conditions. And this is not very interesting for the attacker because the attacker will lose some good messages. So sometimes he will send crypt, uh, encrypted uh, data that will uh, correspond to a clear, uh, clear text starting with 0002, but he will still get a false. So this one won't get, won't get him any equations. So this is why sometimes we have less efficient oracles, which would check other, the, um, other um, conditions. And uh, we have the... Um, uh, beyond the, the, the original paper from uh, Black and Barra, Bardou et al. proposed uh, to analyze this kind of uh, oracles that would do more checks than just verifying that it starts with 0002. And they showed that in practice you had different types of uh, oracles. The simplest one and the one that the attacker wants to, to find in is this one, TTT, that's, okay, I won't explain exactly why what is true and false, but because I will uh, make a mistake. But this one is the simplest one that is, as soon as the message, the clear text message starts with 0002, you have true. So this is a perfect oracle because every good message in the sense uh, uh, of the attacker can use it to get, to get an equation, gets him an equation. And if you have more checks that are being done, you lose some good messages. And so to run the attack, you not only have to send 40,000 uh, 40, um, encrypted messages, but okay, it's also 40, 40, but it can go up to 200 in, uh, with the original algorithm. And in the case where all checks are done and that the uh, server, we also check that the message obtained has the right size, uh, it was not, it was impossible to, to run the original attack in a decent time. So they proposed an improved algorithm which allows to have better numbers from the attacker's point of view. And we see that, again, this is the, the, the perfect oracle from the attacker's point of view. So, now I will speak about Wombat, which is the, the tool that uh, Aina and I worked uh, on during his internship. So to uh, test an implementation, we will write a stub, which uh, basically is uh, a, a chunk of code that will interact with the implementation I want to test. So this stub will get me the RSA public key, will also give me a challenge, an encrypted message that I have to, to, to decrypt, and uh, afterwards, I can submit encrypted messages that will be decrypted. So this is just the stub. And from that, uh, the attacker will use this stub to send several different messages, uh, which will be well, format, f well uh, formed. Uh, some will start with 0002, some won't work, won't start with 0002. Some will have some of the checks that will pass and other won't. And he will observe the uh, behavior of the, um, of the server, of the implementation that is tested. So from that, an attacker can send uh, a very limited number of, um, of messages and infer that the, uh, the, the implementation is or not an, an oracle. And he will also be able to say that it's a TTT oracle or a TFT oracle because it will... It, it, um, uh, it can learn that the, 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 the implementation makes this check or not before having this behavior. So now that the attacker, if the attacker um, finds an oracle, that is that he finds a way to uh, observe good messages in a reliable way, he knows that he has an oracle and he can exploit it. What can we do 
when we have this, we can evaluate more precisely the cost of the attack because sometimes you have some probabilities. It might not be as clean as what I just said. So sometimes you will send several messages uh, of a certain type and try to know what happens uh, from what you can observe. You also can attack the implementation to recover a plain text, but you could also use the attack to compute uh, an exponentiation uh, to, the, to the power of D, which would allow you to sign a message uh, which would be accepted by the public key afterwards. So currently, uh, Aina implemented the original attack from, the, from Black Hand Barra. He also uh, implemented some versions of the improved attacks uh, proposed in the, in, the, in the paper from Crypto the 2012. We have implemented pure oracles to test uh, that the attacks actually work. And uh, we also um, implemented a TLS stub, which allows us to identify and uh, exploit uh, oracles in TLS uh, stacks. So this is an open source framework. It was uh, written in Python. Uh, we have the version 0.1 .1 that uh, was published. So it's uh, in the uh, in, uh, on GitLab. What can you use that for? Uh, it can help you audit and identify problems in existing implementations. You can mount attacks, of course, with respect to the law and the morality. I count on you for that. And you can also, because I'm a teacher, use that to mount uh, hands-on sessions in classes. So uh, we have uh, also a simple TCP server that's very, very simpler than TLS to help uh, mount a good challenge for the, for the students that want to, to, to use uh, and to implement the attack. So what did we do? with Wombat for, for now. Uh, since I'm, I do like TLS, I have this uh, figure in every, each and every of my presentation. Uh, so TLS is this, uh, up until TLS 1.3. That is, you have messages exchanged from the client to the server to in, uh, uh, and back to, hand, to negotiate the uh, parameters you will use. And in the case that we, we are interested in, we will use RSA PKCS1 version 1.5 to uh, encrypt the um, master secret. And this is done, okay, first you have the message certificate that, give you, that gives you the RSA public key from the server. And if the, <coughs> the server uses the, the right algorithms for the attacker, you will have in this message an encrypted message containing um, an RSA encrypted uh, data. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to get the public key and interact with the server by sending uh, there some encrypted data using this message, client key exchange. So this is exactly what our stub does, uh, getting the public key and then including the ciphertext we want to use to mount the attack in the, um, in the client key exchange message. And observe what, what's happening. Because at the beginning, we don't, we don't know if we have an oracle, so we have to look at every possible uh, thing that the server can do that may help us distinguish the case where the padding is good. So we know it starts with 0002 and we've got an equation, and the other case. Okay, we wanted to check this on a real implementation, so we, tr we, we took a very good implementation, which is embed TLS, which is robust against this attack. So we added some code, which is, uh, don't do this at home. It's just saying that if the uh, padding is wrong, send an explicit alert. This is the, the most obvious way to produce um, uh, an, uh, an oracle. And of course, embed TLS is not originally subject to the attack. So if I can show you uh, how this works. So here is a vulnerable server. So this is the embed TLS we, with the patch, with the patch which adds uh, an oracle. And if we, okay, uh, from the attacker point of view, we can uh, use Wombat to probe the server, that is, send him 
some very um, uh, forged packets for for, the, for for which we know the clear text, and we know that the, the clear text has this property or this one. So we send some uh, messages, and sometimes the uh, server will answer with an error, Mac error, or with another error. And the fact that we have different errors is the way we will be able to distinguish between uh, the interesting case for the attacker and the non-interesting cases. And as expected, the attacker finds that there is an oracle okay, of type FFT, that is, we check that it starts with 0002, we check that the padding is at least eight bytes, and we check that there is a message. That is, the padding don't go, doesn't go all the way to the end of the message. And the, um, the tool gives us the way to attack the server afterwards. It says the true signal, that is, this is an oracle, and you should consider true when the server answers with, okay, f uh, an alert uh, of type uh, 21 is it's an alert message, and of type 20, and the false signal is an alert of, uh, with the type 51. So we have an explicit message that allows us to distinguish between the true case and the false case. So we can uh, try and run the, the attack. Th this might take long because it depends on some stuff. Sometimes it takes uh, a reasonable time. We'll see at the end if, if, if we get back to something. Okay. So. We tried to do some real life tests on TLS using the prober I just showed you. And, uh, okay, we, we kind of believe that explicit oracles, the kind that I just described, were not easy to find. Um, but we just tried this on some servers in the, in the wild. And we find exactly what I showed you. That is, some servers will exhibit uh, um, a behavior where you can distinguish just by looking at the messages you receive, so it's really an explicit oracle, you can distinguish the cases where you will get an equation and the case where there is nothing interesting for you. Oh, by the way, the tested server uh, is from the top Alexa 1 million, which was kind of a surprise to us because okay, we, we were expecting that some TLS stacks still had this problem, but not for uh, the, the web and not for the uh, very um, common websites. So w w we would like to, to, to continue some of this work on TLS to uh, get to be more reliable and more precise, um, in particular with regards to timing attacks, because for now we have a very naive way to look at timing, uh, the timing, uh, the, the time uh, used by the server to answer us. But it's tricky, and you might want to. to you, you can be smart to be uh, to, to get more information about the timing from the server. We would also like to look at more server behavior. We didn't look in details at what's happening at the TCP layer, which can be useful in some cases. Uh, and we might also want to uh, use different triggers uh, to. Uh, get another behavior from the server because in the robot attacks they showed that they use different messages to get more information in some cases. It would be interesting to launch uh, real campaigns to look at what's really there out, uh, out there in the in the wild. So looking at HTTPS top Alexa one million in a regular way and. Since we know we will also find some interesting stuff, uh, SMTP servers, which usually are old and not that uh, updated. We also might want to, 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 to write more sophisticated attack using this framework, like drown, but this and our, our, our um, signature forgery against something like quick or, or TLS 1.3. Uh, th th these are not attacks that will allow us to, 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 to break TLS 1.3 or quick, but nevertheless interesting to implement uh, attacks that were described in the, in the literature. Okay, we also wanted to find other applications because the idea behind uh, Wombat was to have a, mod a modular uh, tool that would allow us to, to just use a different stub. So we had these ideas 
XML encryption, SSH, and OpenPGP. So I propose the, the first one to students. For now, I, I, I don't have uh, takers for now, but I believe that some people might be interested in that. Uh, okay, after proposing to Aina to work on SSH, I, I reread the um, RFC and, okay, I I saw that it was not the right version of PKCS1 that was at stake, so it it, it won't work. And for OpenPGP, uh, we did some tests uh, recently, and uh, with the with this setup, we have an array say key in a, a GPG key, which can be used for encryption. We encrypt the message, and uh, we try to decrypt altered version of the encrypted messages. So exactly the, the same setup as in TLS, but this one, this time with uh, by making files that we will feed GPG decrypt. Okay, we send them, and what we got was this. We have different messages, different error messages, which allow us to identify an oracle. So GPG decrypt, uh, decryption uh, of RSA PKCS 1.5 uh, version 1.5 is subject to an oracle. This is not the end of the world. Uh, at, least, at least this is not the reason why you should not use GPG. There are other ones. But uh, this is not the end of the world because the, 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 the case where you would use that, that as an attack would, is that... Um, um, a case where you would be able to send encrypted files, have someone decrypt them for you, and get you the, the, the errors back. So this is not inimaginable, it's possible, but it's not the usual way GPG work. But if you had an idea of uh, running GPG on, uh, I don't know, uh, an SMTP box to automatically decrypt your mail, maybe you would like not to be too verbose about why the decryption failed, because this is the, the, the case where you will have uh, an, um, an oracle. So GPG is not really, it's not really dangerous because usually you do not have a way to automatically uh, um, trigger decryption with GPG. But interesting nevertheless. Okay, in conclusion, uh, what uh, was called the million message attack from Barashan Baha, and uh, which he, he described in uh, 1998, is an attack that is now very well known. I find it interesting as a teacher because it's an interesting in, uh, attack which is not trivial. It's okay, you, you have to, to work a little to, to make it work. What's more uh, annoying is that it's still a reality today, and uh, I didn't um, uh, dwell on this, but you might have heard of the name because of robot, because of a cat, because of... You have, every year since 2014, you have a paper, an academic paper that says, oh, on the, by the way, we find another one, another way to uh, another oracle, Black and Bar oracle, in this case. So it's still a reality, and that's why we wanted to have an open source tool to test the attack, identify oracles where they may exist, to help us reproduce existing attacks and uh, uh, be extensible to be uh, to, to help look at other standards beyond what has, has already been, uh, been looked at. And again, this is, I believe, something that may be used to, uh, uh, for, teacher, to, for teachers to, 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 to create hands-on sessions. Okay, thank you for your attention. Here is the, um, the slides will be on the, on the website. There you can find them here, and the code is available here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for the presentation. We have time for questions, comments. Oh, okay. Good question. Ah. Want to see if okay. uh, it's working? Okay, things are, ha are happening, but it's it's a little longer. This actually using TLS for the demo was is interesting because it's a real use case. But problem is you have a lot of things to do. You are not just making computations. You have um, okay. I will let it this way. Maybe maybe we'll have something, and we will see uh, some strings with eight uh, forty eight characters. Okay, I can cheat. 
Okay. This is what we, we, we would like to, to see. That is, again, okay. We had, in this case, okay, in the previous attempts to, to, to see this, we had 20,000 calls, so we had to send 20,000 client key exchange key messages, and it, used, it, it was done in seven minutes. So the problem is, it's an FFT oracle. It's not the best one. The best one is the TTT, and it's not the case of the, the one we implemented because we, we did not want to, to write too much code to, to break embed TLS beyond what we needed. So, okay. It's, I, I, we cheated, but this is what we, and, uh, and for the planet, I will, I will, I will about this. <laughs> okay. Other question, comments? Yes. Thank you for thank you for the talk. Uh, is it also uh, what you describe? Is it does it also apply to TLS 1.3, or is it only? It doesn't apply to TLS 1.3 because uh, the client key exchange message and uh, is used in this way to uh, encrypt a master secret that's generated by the client. And this is known as the RSA encryption key exchange method in TLS, and it was removed in TLS 1.3. But in TLS 1.3, you still can use RSA to sign the messages from the server. So you could use an SSL v2 or an old TLS version using the same RSA key as an oracle to forge the signature. However, for the attacker, that won't work because it's very long and the signature should be done during the, the, the time of the session. So it's not directly applicable. Other question, comments? Yes. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, you said you didn't launch a systematic campaign, but you uh, tried to find vulnerable servers in the wild. So how many did you test, and how frequently did you find vulnerable servers? OK. Um, OK, we didn't do it because I think I'm lazy. But uh, I think it was only on the top Alexa 1000, one, 1, and uh, we we got uh, explicit oracles, but it was a lot of servers that would depend on the same entity. So we have actually one big case, and we had timing attacks, but the timing oracles. But since okay, since I'm not completely confident in uh, in our in our timing evaluation, uh, it, it's not that clear that there was a problem. Okay. Uh, second question: um, How common is it that clients use this type of padding in communications? So, like, uh, if I were to to find an encrypted message, uh, oh, uh, how likely it is that they use this type of vulnerable padding? Okay. Uh, oh, yes, because the, the goal for the attacker is to find a TLS message that contains an interesting uh, master secret. So you have to have the client at one point who will send this. Um, hopefully for the security, TLS 1.3 is used a lot today and TLS 1.2 also with other key exchange mechanisms. So in the web, I think this is kind of hard to find today. Uh, um, naturally, client and server will use something else. But I believe that in the SMTP world, okay, all bets are possible. Uh, so there might be a lot. And also, this is also why we wanted to look at other things. And GPG in this way might be very interesting. But we, ha you, we make the assumption that you can automate um, the, the decryption, which is a hard assumption, I think. Uh, thank you. Uh, we still have time for questions, comments? Yes? Uh, thanks for your talk. Um, 
have you studied hardware implementations like C2 elements or TPMs or things like this that also perform some cryptography? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, no, we didn't look at, at them. I'm sure we could, uh, but this will most certainly lead to um, to timing attacks with, I, I believe that's, that might be the, the most obvious uh, result, but no, we, did, we, we don't look. One more question? One other question? Yes? I'm coming. No, oh, please, I'm happy to come here. Please Some on. exercise from, for him. Uh, your project looks amazing. You've got unit tests, Python 2, Python 3, Docker, that's great. I didn't find the documentation. No, there's no need, there's no need because it's, it's so well written. Uh, no, uh, you, we, you don't have that much documentation. I think we have a readme and an install file, but be, yeah. But we have Docker files. So, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's possible to, to read it. Um, no, there's no documentation of, uh, to, to say how to, to, to write a new stuff. And uh, clearly, this might be of interest. Uh, because if, if you want to use it, we, 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 will do, we, will can, we can do this. You want to organize a workshop? Or? Um, I'm not sure. That, no, no, no. What, what would be interesting would be to look at other Oracle uh, padding attacks, like the, one on, the ones on CBC. CBC mode, using the same idea of being modular. But uh, okay, yes, there are no documentation. But okay, we. I, I'm not that much uh, okay convinced that you need a lot of documentation. It's lacking because the code is relatively small. And uh, but yes, you you clearly a tutorial saying how you write a stub would be interesting. When it will be available? <laughs> No, no. You, 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 you hold the mic. You don't, you, you don't, <laughs> you don't ask questions. Okay, as a command question. <laughs> okay, so let's thank uh, Olivier Ina again.